Today we have two low side crashes. One, it's gonna be a very typical on the weekend. We're gonna go crazy in the mountains, low side, high speed. And the next one is gonna be something that's more common out there, especially for us that are commuting to and from work at night. So let's go ahead and jump into this and figure out why this happens so we don't do it ourselves. <laughs> No, 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 the loo. Vado, vado a chiamare il coso con so this still image really plays a huge part in what type of mindset is happening here with these two riders we have 143 kilometers an hour that's about 88 miles per hour and then we have these riders utilizing both lanes oncoming and then their own lane to navigate around so guys let's not do that we're out in the twisties out having some fun let's go ahead and utilize the speed limit there's trust me there's a lot of fun when it comes to actually doing what you're supposed to be doing get some good lines get some good feel for the body positioning and then practice your slow look press and roll and then maybe even trail breaking if you're in the advanced type of skill set let's go ahead and get to what caused the actual crash so right here we got the whole knee down situation the body position is not the absolute best in order to get the knee down you're gonna have to get really good body positioning leaving that bike really high up now the reason why you want to do the whole body positioning super far in is so that you keep your bike more upright utilizing a little bit more traction having the suspension work to your favor not at an angle but more vertically uh, it's going to allow more traction it's going to be a better overall safer ride but when you are not picking in a proper lane or if you're going super fast uh, you're going to have a lot of problems. There's a reason why I paused it right here. So the whole point of asphalt with your warm tires is that your warm tires are very malleable. They're very squishy when they're warm. So with the asphalt and the aggregate, the rock that's in the asphalt, it basically squishes in and holds in like almost like a Velcro style of traction. You're going to have a lot of weight. You have a lot of friction. It's going to be like a little Velcro. The moment you move into something that is going to be like a gravel or paint lines or oil or rain, it's going to pretty much go in between that little groove section that you really want to have that friction and have that traction. So the moment he hits this portion right here of the white line, he's going to lose traction, especially on that rear tire. When it comes to traction itself, you have basically three things that are taking away or giving back traction. You have acceleration or deceleration. Deceleration is braking. And then you have turning, which is going to utilize a little bit different portions of that tire compound. So if you accelerate really hard and you utilize 80% of your available traction for acceleration, if you start to turn in and utilize 40% of the original 100%, guess what? You're at 120% out of 100%. It spills over. You lose traction. So this is why I say do not go super fast while trying to turn or while trying to brake. Uh, it's not going to be a good ideal situation. So right here what happened is that he was utilizing, let's say, maybe 90% of available traction out of the 100% for this turn with this speed, with this deceleration, with all things considered. The moment he hits anything that will take away traction, uh, an external force taking away traction, it's going to make it to where maybe now his total available traction is 80%, but he's still using 90%. It's the overflow thing where it's going to all of a sudden just dump out complete loss of traction, washed out. So that's what's going to happen here. It's going to wash out. And this is why I tell people do not do this out in the mountains. And we, Yami Noob and I had a great conversation uh, while going up Mount Lemon. We talked about, you know, take it to the track. Don't do it on the mountain because when you're on a mountain, this is exactly what happens if you lose control your safety net is not the same as it would be at a track where you have a very good runoff to where it's mostly just going to be abrasion and like sliding across the ground here you're going to slide across the ground until you hit something and typically it's going to be the side of the cliff you're going to go off the cliff or you're going to hit something like this a brick wall so that right there is going to have a massive 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 impacts to the body which is going to cause a lot of damage you're going to have broken bones you're going to have injured organs you're going to have muscle tearing nerve damage you could possibly just die, uh, especially at these speeds. I mean, right now it shows 101. Somebody in the chat, go ahead and tell me that what that is in miles per hour, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna be really fast into a brick wall. 101 kilometers to zero in a split second. 
is not going to do very well for your body itself. The things that I want you to take away from this is if you're going to be going out in the mountains and racing with your friends, just realize that there are going to be some consequences and there's going to be some things associated with that. You're taking a lot of risks. You might have a lot of skill with it, but you're still taking a lot of risks. If this is not something that you're typically going to get paid for or if it's a job, think about that. If you crash and you get paralyzed or you start breaking bones or you start having issues, how are you going to provide for your family? How are you going to provide for yourself? Is somebody going to have to take care of you? If you have a traumatic brain injury, you probably can't even function anymore in the thing that you absolutely love, which would be motorcycle riding. So we need to start thinking about that type of stuff when we go out riding on these weekends. Who are we riding for? Are we riding for our friends? Are we riding for our ego? Or are we riding to enjoy something long term? We don't want to be flash in the pan here. We don't want to be going crazy. We do not want to crash and cause ourselves to have massive problems, life altering or life ending issues to where now we can't enjoy what we want to do anymore. So guys, let's not do this. Let's not race. And if we are going to be doing stuff like this, take it to a track where it's going to be mitigated risks when you have that long, nice washout to where if you do low sight on a turn like this, you're just going to keep flying through the grass or the gravel, whatever it is, but you have full protection. You have everything you possibly need and you're not going to run into walls where it's going to cause you to have life altering or life ending issues. If you don't know what type of gear to get and you don't know how to read the helmet rating system or even what type of motorcycle to get, I highly recommend checking out the motorcycle beginner's guide that I have on my website right now. It's 55 plus pages. It's going to explain everything that you need to know prior to riding and then when you first start riding. So guys, I'm super excited about it. So check it out. Link will be in the description. Let's jump into the second one. So this incident is something that happens quite a bit to new riders or even experienced riders that are a little bit impatient. And the reason why I say that is because we're trying to go through this intersection at a very high rate of speed. If you look down right here, it says 38 miles per hour. It's a little fast for a turn like this. Uh, we're doing 90 degree turns here. We're going from one spot to the next, one spot to the next. We're not doing long looping turns like we would do on a track or even in a mountain. So going 40, almost 40 miles an hour to a 90 degree turn, way too fast. So what we need to be doing here in this situation, especially if it's green light, is go ahead and do slow look, press and roll because we don't really know what's going on with the road itself. Is there debris, some asphalt, maybe some oil spilled? So we have poor visibility because of nighttime. So let's go ahead and take it down a little bit slower. Ride within the conditions that are allowed by the environment, not necessarily our abilities or even the bike's abilities. Right here, play to the lowest common denominator here. And right now, it looks a little hazardous. Intersections, definitely an orange stage. But then you also have nighttime. So I'm typically always in orange stage at night because you never know what could be popping out. Our visibility is really bad. So we're going to move forward just a little bit. And right here, he's going to push the bike down. Let's go ahead and move forward just a little bit more. He's pushing the bike down. And that's going to cause the bike to keep losing more and more and more traction like I talked about in the first video. And if you keep doing that while accelerating, that's turning and acceleration, two out of the three things that we talked about. The only thing he's not doing is decelerating, but he's turning and turning and turning, accelerating, 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 and that's just removing more and more and more tire traction to the point where the tire says, I can't hold on, and then it washes out. So the next time you go into a corner, think about that. Think about you have acceleration, deceleration, and then turning that will take away your traction. So if you are turning, 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 don't keep accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. Maintain your throttle pressure if you absolutely have to. You might slow down just a little bit, but you're pushing that bike down and turning, turning, turning. To correct that, learn better body positioning, learn better throttle manipulation, learn trail braking if you want to learn into that type of stuff. That's more of an advanced skill, but the best thing you possibly could do is just slow down before the turn, look where you want to go press to initiate counter steer and body positioning and then roll on the throttle when your nose is pointed to where you want to go so right here he's accelerating through it and he keeps accelerating while pushing the bike down and that's what's going to cause it to wash out if you've ever been in a situation where it feels like that rear tire wants to slide out 
it's more than likely you are pushing the bike down or you're pushing the bike to its limits and just maybe a little bit of gravel, maybe just a little bit of wear on that tire is going to cause it to slip and then possibly grab. In this situation, it never grabs back and then he starts to slide down. Now we talk about how to predict these hazards by using really good situational awareness. We talk about evasive maneuvers when it comes to anything that might be in our path of travel like a car or a pothole. And then we need to mitigate or minimize the injuries associated with anything that fails. So if we're going to ride around, we cannot be wearing just gloves and a helmet. We need to have motorcycle specific jackets, we need to have motorcycle specific boots and pants associated with motorcycling. That is what's going to help minimize or mitigate some of the injuries. Now if it's really bad like we saw in that first video, we might not be able to mitigate all the injuries or even minimize them with gear. Sometimes it doesn't do enough because of the physics involved, the shearing of organs, you could have nerve damage, you can have veins and, and arteries being sliced open basically from the torsion and split movement of the body positioning. That's when we're going to have a lot of problems. So understand that gear is not going to solve every problem so we need to predict and make sure we're riding with the proper mindset. Hopefully this guy had insurance. Hopefully the other guy had health insurance. So guys, make sure you're paying attention to these turns. We're not using a lot of acceleration while turning really sharply because we could lose traction. Our tires are great, they really are, but they can't solve improper control inputs. So let's make sure we're not doing that.